This speaker is Sadhu Sundar Severaj, and he sits on the Council of Abraham in heaven. Yeah, he's a living, breathing man that actually gets to uh, sit with uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Job, Paul, Jeremiah, and the who's who of the Bible. It's twenty-four of them. Um, I don't know if I don't know if he gets to make decisions with them, but he sits. He gets to <laughs> sits with. It. These, these, I mean, this Council of Abraham, the twenty-four elders. They make decisions uh, for the entire earth. They know uh, they make decisions on who's going to be the next president of the United States, who's going to be the next king of this country, the next ruler of this country, and a whole lot of other things. The Lord Jesus Christ comes in, sits, sits down a file, and um, leaves them to make decisions. And, the, the, of course, the, the Lord's decision is final. You know, he gets to go over what they've decided and everything and finalize the decisions. Um he knew who the who the who was going to be the next president. He knew Trump was going to be president. He knew Obama was going to be president, and he knew a whole lot of other stuff. And he knows a lot of other stuff. He's an end days, end times um, minister. Um, he's been before the Most High God, the throne of the Almighty God, um, in the throne room in itself, which which he described as very scary. He has thousands, and thousands of encounters and thousands of experiences that he shares. Um, and there's, there's other people like this also too on earth. So, um, keep learning. I mean, if you're going to learn, learn from someone who's actually talked with the Lord all the time. I mean, he's been counseled by Enoch, Job, Paul. I mean, he's got John. I mean, he, they come and sit down with him, go through, through the Bible with him page by page by page. And, uh, he's got like 45 years of, of doing this now. now. His first experience with the Lord is he went to a church and the Lord, um, Threw him out of a chair, basically uh, raised the chair up and put him on, set him on his feet. <laughs> that was his first, and told him to go down to the front because he wasn't going to do it. And he went down to the front, so that was his first experience with the Lord. Then after that, it just escalated and it got more and more and more. And then one of these days, he was, he was um, you know, praying, getting ready to pray for uh, this huge pile of uh, letters. And that's and back in those days, they did them one by one. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, it was. Uh, walked into the room, knocked on the door, because he had asked not to be disturbed. The Lord Jesus Christ knocked on the door and walked into the room and sat down and prayed with him over every single letter, which in tears. So keep learning. You listen to something every single day. Subscribe to the channel now and give a thumbs up, a like, so other people around the world can get this vital information. I mean, we're going to be learning about the tribulation, the, the, the one world government, the false prophet, the, the new world order, or the uh, cashless society, um, one world religion, rapture, all of these things, everything that you want to know. So um, keep learning. Listen to something every single day. I mean, you got to get up to speed. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening here, and they're going to be happening here in the next decade, and you want to be ready. You don't want to be shocked. You don't want to be surprised because there's, there's going to be some very shocking and surprising things, and billions of people will not know how to handle it. But if you have at least a little bit of information, you can be prepared mentally for it. And be a strong tower for yourself, your family, and your church. God bless you guys. Keep learning. Astrology had its roots in Babylon. And again, you'll find them mentioned in Daniel chapter 1, verse 20, chapter 2, verse 2, verse 10, verse 27, chapter 4, verse 7, chapter 5, verse 7, verse 11, and verse 15. So they were very good in witchcraft, magic, divination, and astrology. They were the best brains. All the wisdom of astrology was born in Babylon. All the wisdom of witchcraft, magic and soothsaying were born, had its roots in Babylon. So this ancient Babylon had many greats. One, it was a great commercial city. Secondly, it was a great military power. And thirdly, it was a great religious center. Now, please remember this. It was a great commercial city. It was a great religious center. It was a great military power. When the Antichrist comes, 
he will similarly have three headquarters one a religious headquarters in jerusalem secondly a military headquarters in berlin germany and thirdly a commercial headquarters in new babylon 3 what it was in the past will once again repeat in the future i say this based on the revelations the lord gave me now in the year 2016 the lord had me go to berlin and to do a prayer walk in berlin and during it was during the prayer walk the lord showed me the ancient spirits that were dwelling there in the city of berlin and those ancient spirits that inhabited in hitler and once again those same ancient spirits will reemerge in the last days in the antichrist and subsequently we went back again in 2017 to do a prophetic conference in berlin and once again in this year next month we will be in berlin to do a prophetic conference because the lord showed me what is going to happen quickly in germany so that's why he said you need to go and do a prophetic conference and prophesy speak over the city and raise up prophetic intercessors for the nation you know many things that are prophesied in the bible you cannot prevent them from happening however the consequences can be lesser that we can do our prayers can do that our prayers can be mitigating factors to reduce impact of judgments or reduce the impact of the enemy's force coming upon the church now this ancient babylon before the word babylon came it was called babel genesis chapter 10 verse 10 tells us like that and the founder of babel genesis chapter 10 verse 8 says is a man called nimrod i'm sure you've heard of this famous name nimrod or in famous name now who was nimrod the bible tells this much of little information about him two things about him number 1 he was the first king of the ancient world first king and a very powerful ruler on the earth so he has or he had political power number 1 number 2 he was a mighty warrior a conqueror so that tells us another thing about him he had military power so he was a powerful world leader political world leader secondly he was a mighty mighty military leader who goes conquering these are two things that says about him and the another another thing about him was he was a the scripture says he was a mighty hunter before god in the original in the original hebrew it says he was a mighty defiant person against god so he was a very very defiant man against the living god so he stood for everything against god so that led him to the next thing he wanted to build a unified world city and a world a tall tower genesis chapter 11 verse 4 tells us that so what he attempted to do was to create the first new world order that he was the first person to attempt that a new world order where the whole world comes under his control and he will be the political leader over all and he will subdue all nations militarily and bring them all under his control and babel will be the headquarters for the whole world 
That's what he wanted to do. Secondly, the purpose of the tower. What was the purpose of the tower? Why constructing a tower can be such a bad thing? Okay, how? Look, let's look at how the tower was built. If you read Genesis chapter 11 verse 3, the scripture says, they use burnt brick cemented together with mortar made of bitumen. Now when you do, when you mix such composure, what results is a waterproof structure. Burnt brick made with mortar, then bitumen applied all over. And do you know, that's the exact formula that God gave to Noah to build the ark. So what Nimrod attempted to do was, if God ever sent another flood, his city and his tower are waterproof. That was his attempt. I will withstand against whatever the Almighty will do. The Almighty cannot touch me, cannot touch my government, cannot touch my city. We are waterproof. But he forgot one thing. It was not fireproof. <laughs> he forgot. He forgot to make it fireproof, so God sent fire down instead of water. So, they built this tower. Now, how can a skyscraper be a bad thing? If you look at the world today, many nations of the world are competing with one another who is going to build the tallest skyscraper in the world. Just when the Dubai government thought they had built a huge skyscraper. Have you seen it? The Butch Towers. The Taiwanese people came to build the tallest skyscraper in the world. Called the One Tower. See? One. Don't forget the word one. One world order. One world government. One world religion. One. Amazingly, that's what it was called, one. They all are competing with one another to build the tallest structure like what Nimrod did. So if the tallest structures in the world today can exist, why destroy this poor guy's tower? During a, a conference that we did in Egypt in 2009, the Lord revealed to me that the real purpose why God destroyed the Tower of Babel because he was not merely building a strong skyscraper. What he attempted to do was to create an altar for the one world religion. So his attempt was to build a huge tower to model or rival the pyramid in Egypt. The pyramid in Egypt, which was originally built by the prophet Enoch, was actually built as a place of altar to offer sacrifices unto God. That's why if you visit the pyramid in Giza, the top portion is missing. It's not a, a triangle shape on the top because the purpose was never to have a top it is supposed to be a seat that God comes to sit and to receive worship from all the people that were in the ancient times that was the purpose now now we I don't want to go into the great history of all that because that's not our purpose today so what was the pyramid Nimrod modeled similarly after that to create an altar for the demons to come. Number two, number two, that altar, the tower that he made was to become a portal. When they were offering sacrifices that he'll create a portal 
for demons from the spiritual realm to come into the natural realm. That was the real purpose of the Tower of Babel. And that is why God destroyed it. He destroyed the tower so that a portal cannot be created for demons to come through. You know, there is a purpose for everything that God does. Is mystery Babylon real or imagery language used in the Bible? Or does it really have significance in the last days? There are many things in the Bible that is used as a parable. It's just an imaginary language that is used to convey a spiritual thing. For example, the bride of Christ. It's an imaginary language used. That means it is the composed body of everybody. So it signifies a bride. A city or a nation is signified as a woman. Like a lady. We say she. When we speak of a nation, we say she. Are you, sure? are you familiar with that? So these are imaginary words used in the Bible. So now my question is, or we need to answer this question. Is mystery Babylon real or imagery or does it have any real significance in the last days? Let's look at a few facts. Number one, the Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 5 verses 5 to 11 that Babylon will be rebuilt again in the last days. In the year 2011, another prophet friend of mine and I, we conducted a three days of prophetic conference in one small hill station in India. And that was the very first prophetic conference where we ever televised live on our television network, Angel TV. And uh, during one of the days, this prophet friend saw a vision similar to what Zechariah saw in Zechariah chapter 5. Similarly, a swan carrying a basket and there was evil there. He saw it exactly as how. But he was not given any interpretation. The, that night, the following day at 3 in the morning, when I got up to pray, I saw in an open vision. On my bed, I saw this vision. An entire city been rebuilt and the interpretation for the meaning of Zechariah chapter 5 was shown to me in exact in great detail how this vase is brought to the land of Shinar and then from Shinar which is Babylon how a world empire will come and then from the world empire the Antichrist will rule the whole world so this is something that is prophesied about the future. So it will be rebuilt. Number two. The Apostle John saw Babylon rebuilt and thriving materialistically, economically and militarily. In Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18. He saw the future. He was shown the future. The whole book of Revelation is about the future. Chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 3 were things that related to the past or present. As he, the Lord told him, I will show you things that must shortly come to pass, that which was, that which is and that which is to come. So the past, the present, the future. The condition of the seven churches were the past. And the Lord said, this is the past. And this is the present. But from chapter 4 right up to chapter 22, they're all about the future. Nothing about the past anymore. All future events. So John saw future. Babylon rebuilt and it was striving materialistically, economically, militarily and also 
religiously. So in four fronts. Number three. Babylon will be a literal city. Not just an imaginary city or a spiritual city. It will be a literal city. Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 says that it sits upon many waters. And the angel who took John around to show all this, he interprets it in verse 9 and verse 18 to say the many waters represents peoples. So which means this is a city that is populated, heavily populated by people. So that tells us it is a real city and not an imaginary city. Number four. As the governments of the world today make alliances and they sign treaties and covenants, so likewise, the world governments of tomorrow will make alliances, sign treaties with her and also submit themselves to her. Revelation chapter 17 verses 10 to 13. Number five. This Babylon will be a nation or a city given over to sexual vices. Which means the LBGT plus Q, R, all the letters, they keep on adding, you know. First it was LGBT, right? Then they added a Q. Then they added another R. And every now and then they have different, different terms. Anyway, so that's why we can keep it open. A to Z. So the LGBT community will finally find a headquarters. That will become their headquarters. Not only for the LGBT community, but every manner of unimaginable sexual vices immorality will be found there. Have you heard of this small tiny weeny nation called Malta? You know Malta is one of the nations where the Apostle Paul had preached the gospel. Just a few months ago I made a shocking discovery that the president of Malta or the government of Malta had approved same-sex marriage. Okay, that's number one. Number two, after the bill has come to uh, be effected, the president went on a nation address to say he wants to dedicate Malta to be full of gay people. A nation of gays. I decided to erase Malta from my memory. I don't want to think about Malta anymore. I was shocked. The president of the nation making the statement. An entire nation. Like the former glory of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know many years ago. Haiti was destroyed by a massive earthquake. Before that happened. Do you know. That the president of Haiti. On the day of his inauguration, stood on a podium, lifted up his hand and he said, I dedicate this nation to Satan. These are all historical facts. I am not making up anything. He, he made a public statement during his inauguration. I dedicate this nation to Satan. And Haiti is a nation given over to voodoo and witchcraft. So it was wiped out. So can you imagine what will happen to Malta next? So when Babylon comes, Malta will pale in comparison to Babylon. Number six. Revelation chapter 17 verse 4 tells us that Babylon will be materialistically super rich should be too rich with the goods of the world that all the nations will trade there today 
then Wall Street will become nothing. Just street. Just street. Because the walls will be torn down. It will be just street. New York stock market will become nothing. London stock market will become nothing. The commerce of the world will be centered, will gyrate towards Babylon. Babylon will become the center for economic power. Number eight, sorry, seven. She will be full of abominations. What is that? That is an amalgamation of all religions into one. Every religion, take something of every religion, put them together. That is why the scripture says, this woman, mystery woman has a golden cup in her hand, all made into one. Now it's one offering to everybody. Now I tell you some current news that is going to happen. Three years ago, the Lord showed me, which I have now made public, that the present Pope is the false prophet. You heard that? Now, and subsequently over the years, the signs of him being the false prophet mentioned in Revelation 13, are coming to pass one by one. This year, he has made an announcement. The announcement is the formation of one world religion. And an invitation has been issued to all top religious leaders on the world to gather together September 2020 in the city of Hague in Holland at a place called the Peace Palace to sign the covenant of one world religion. It's been set September 2020. And if the one religion comes to place and you know the coming of the Antichrist is just around the corner, around the corner. Because this needs to come first. The world needs to be united together with one religion. Then comes one nation. Then comes one economic power. All will follow one after another. One unified identifying number for everybody. And we can all do transactions on the internet, don't need to step out of your house anymore. Is it good? In a sense, it's good. But it's a trap. You don't even need to get out of your potato couch. With a smartphone in your hand, you can do everything. See? Good or bad? Good. Good. You become fatter. So if you get fatter, you keep on eating potato in one hand and you have your mobile phone on your other hand. You know, even the TV industry, because I'm involved in television broadcasting, I know what's happening in the broadcast industry. There is a talk in the broadcast industry to shut down televisions and to migrate to internet. The, the, this talk first came out when we first started our television ministry in the year 2004. The people in the broadcast industry predicted tele, television will die. This was 2004. Today, with the advent of internet broadcasting and the social media, television will die and all manner of videos or movies will all migrate to the internet. An experiment was done.
by all these powers to be through Netflix. Net How many of you have signed up for Netflix? Come on. Come on. I know you. Come on. Come on. Now, what's the convenience of Netflix? You don't need to go to the movie theater. The movie theater comes to your house. See? You don't need to get out from your potato couch. You sit there. The movie theater comes to you. Now, because of the success of Netflix, now Disney is going to embark on a similar route. And when, so when Disney made an announcement, Universal Studios, they made a similar announcement. Every one of the top movie industry producers have made announcements that they will all migrate towards the internet. So, it's just in the palm of your hand with your mobile devices, your mobile smartphone, your iPad, your laptop. It's, it's, it's a media on the go. And it will all be controlled by the World Wide Web. And a new Wi-Fi code is coming, you know. And you know what's the amazing thing? They have a code for the new Wi-Fi. It's called number six. I couldn't, I couldn't stop being amazed by the choice of the number. It couldn't have come at a more opportune time. That's a prophetic sign. I just read in a broadcast magazine that I used to get. A new Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6. That's the quote. Why of all the numbers must be 6? Right? See, the world is getting ready for the mark of the beast. Mark of the beast. The world is ready. Is the church ready? No. That's the problem. We are blind, deaf, and dumb. Be careful. Now, my stand is this. Many people ask me this question. So, I tell you today. My stand is, use technology as much as you can until it will come to your hand. Then say, no. Stop. Then stop. Use it as much as you want, you like, because it's good. There are some good points in it. However, the catch is, don't become a slave to technology. You must learn to survive even without them. But today, people can live without food, can live without water, but not live without Wi-Fi. Don't laugh. You all are guilty of that. Whenever you go to any new place, what's the first question you ask? What's the password? Right? We are all guilty of that. Me too. Me too. I'm not a holy saint. I do the... <laughs> when I check into any hotel, the first question is, what's the password? <laughs> Some say no password. See, I'm being honest with you. We are all slaves of technology. But don't become a bonded slave. Use technology. They are good things. Today, our studio is wireless and paperless. It's all automated and the technicians don't need to be there physically. All fully automated. This is what the Lord told me in 2010. To migrate towards a fully automated. So every Saturday, we fast and pray. So all my staffs, 130 of them come together to fast and pray. During the four hours that we are in prayer, no one is manning those equipment. They all run automatically. Of course, the angels are sitting there and look, making sure. <laughs> making sure all is moving perfectly. See, you, have, you become wireless and peopleless. And that's what the technology tomorrow will become. Have you heard of artificial intelligence? Yes. 
take note of that. That is going to be a powerful tool in the hands of the Antichrist. Few years ago, you know, I was always fascinated by Revelation chapter 13. How is the false prophet going to cause life to come to a statue and the statue will speak, the statue will think, the statue will decide and the statue will act upon orders. How? So I thought maybe somehow he will have some magical powers and cause a wooden pole to become alive. If God can do that, maybe Satan can do that. He didn't transform a wooden pole to become a cobra. Right? So I thought like that, you know. But a few years ago, to be exact, two years ago, I was meditating the scripture one evening. And I, when I read the scripture, and he will cause the statue to speak. And the Holy Spirit said, that is artificial intelligence. At that time, when I received this revelation, artificial intelligence was at its infant stage and it, and it has not become full-blown like how it is today. Now I'll tell you something more interesting. Now in Revelation 13, it says the false prophet will cause the statue to speak. Now the false prophet, I told you earlier, is the Pope, right? A few years ago, Vatican sponsored a World Congress on Artificial Intelligence. All the top brains in the world, they gathered together in Vatican to discuss about artificial intelligence. Why would Vatican be involved in that? Because it's something scientific, right? Why? Why have a religious person be involved in that? Now that proves the power that he will use in the last days. And the artificial intelligence is, get, is getting better and better and better. To what extent? To the exact extent as how we are. With the with plus plus features which we do not possess. So that's what is going to go towards. How many of you have uh, iPhones? Now, when you send a message, before you type a word, the, the system itself will suggest to you those words. Right? It makes typing easier. Now, what is that? Artificial intelligence. It reads what you regularly write. And then, it helps you by giving you all those words. Okay, these are the words you use regularly. Why do you use your brain? Don't use your brain. Let me help you. This is all artificial intelligence in its early stage. And it will become full blown in the days to come. Number nine. Oops. Number eight. This shows me that all of you are alert. It's 1.15 now. Shall I stop? Shall I continue? Yes. Okay. It won't be much longer. Number eight. Babylon will be a great military power. How do we know? Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 7 says, It is seated on a beast with seven heads and ten horns. And the seven heads and the ten horns, the angel interpreted to the apostle John as, seven nations governments that be, will be so militarily powerful that they will surrender their entire military power to the beast to the to babylon so that babylon becomes a military powerhouse something like nato nato is a group of nations together that is formed to support one another to fight for one another Something like that. Number nine. New Babylon is anti-God and anti-Christians. And Revelation chapter 17 verse 6, chapter 18 verse 24 tells us that 
the new Babylon government will kill Christians. Christians will be killed, beheaded, churches bulldozed, closed, godly prophetic church leaders will be imprisoned, tried in court and even killed. So if you are not ready today for persecution, how can you survive the hour of trial that will come upon the whole world? You must be prepared now. Persecution is coming. What do I do? Be strong in your faith. Be resolutely determined. No matter how much you are tortured, you will never renounce the Lord Jesus. You must prepare even your children and your grandchildren to be ready even for martyrdom. You know, during the seven days of fast that I, the Lord called me to, one of the subjects that He talked to me about is the worldwide persecution and martyrdom that is coming. So He said, I want you to go to seven nations next year and conduct martyrs conference and prepare my people for what is coming. So among the seven nations, one is the US. So if God willing, we will do a martyrs conference in Cincinnati, Ohio next year. The dates, they are working out on the dates. I don't want that to clash with our conference. They are proposing in August. I don't want it to clash with our annual homecoming here. So, we must be prepared. Not only you, but also your children. Because one way to get to the elders is through the children. You can be strong. But if the soldiers come and squeeze the neck of your children or your grandchildren, can any one of you just stand strong to see your grandchildren be squeezed to death? Oh. See, it's easy to say no now because you are not in the situation yet. But when you are in the situation, your emotions will run wild. It will take over you. And what will you do at that time? The greater tendency will be to save your grandchild you will renounce. You will be greatly tempted to renounce. To prevent that from happening, you train your children now. That's why the Lord told me about seven years ago to prepare the children for martyrdom. So we have a special program on Angel TV called Warriors where I have a bunch of kids together with me and I teach them stories about martyrs. How the martyrs in the past have lived and then I teach them the principles of what we learn from the martyrs. And through that program we have raised up an army of children martyrs today who have become so resolutely strong that no matter what happens they will not take the mark of the beast. I have done that. So should you. Amen. Number 10. What is the real solid proof that this new Babylon is really real? There is one. Let me give you one final proof that this Babylon is not mystical. It is not spiritual. It is not allegory. But it is real. I'll give you two scriptures. Revelation chapter 17 verse 6 and chapter 18 verse 20. If you look at these two scriptures, please turn your Bibles with me now to Revelation chapter 17 verse 6. We will briefly look at these two scriptures. In 17 6 it says, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. 
Now look at the phrase there. Blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Martyrs of Jesus did not exist in ancient Babylon. Because the Lord Jesus came in the New Testament. So this is the first proof that this Babylon is not an ancient Babylon. Second proof. Revelation 18.20 Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Now look at the word apostles. They did not exist in ancient Babylon. Apostles existed in the New Testament. So these two scriptures finally proves that this Babylon mentioned in the book of Revelation will be the future and is real. Amen. So that concludes part one and tomorrow we will look at the spirit behind this. Why did John saw Babylon as a woman? Let's stand up for a word of prayer. Thank you, gracious Holy Spirit, for opening the eyes of our understanding that we may learn about this mystery Babylon. Thank you for giving us this understanding. Thank you for giving us this clarity that we may know what is coming in the days to come. And I ask you now, Spirit of the Living God, to prepare the hearts and the minds of each and every one of your dear sons and daughters who are gathered here and all those who are watching from afar. Prepare them, Lord. Prepare them. For it is not your desire that they be ignorant of all these things. And I pray the very special angel that you apportioned to them last night will guide them and enlighten them further on this. Just like you sent the angel to enlighten the Apostle John on the many things he saw about the book of Revelation. Thank you, Father. I commit your dear children into your hands. Let them have a wonderful restful afternoon and also to meditate on all these things that they have heard in the first session and in the second session and prepare them Lord to meet with you in the evening session and let them have a wonderful breakthrough in their lives and an encounter with you in the evening session in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. So let's uh, let's do some catching up. Uh, go ahead and uh, listen to something every single day. Check out the playlist on this channel here. Subscribe, subscribe, and uh, get up to, get up to date. Catch up to speed. Um, if you don't want to get behind, be further behind. If you already are behind and don't know, um, it's um, it's time now. We, get, we still have time left to, to learn and be ready and be prepared. You'll, you'll know more than your friends, your relatives, you know, and, but that, that's okay. We're remnant, you know, we're chosen, we're the elect. So God bless you guys forever and ever. Subscribe and give a, um, a like, a thumbs up so other people around the world, all the children of God can, uh, can learn too. Have a great day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.